So after a week or two of massive news in Formula 1, both good and bad, this week's video is something that almost every other F1 YouTuber ventures into, predicting the Formula 1 grid for the year that isn't here yet. So this is it, huh, folks? <laughs> I know. I know. But actually, I thought this would be something fun to do, since I've never done it before, and since I'm kind of strapped for time right now, I thought this would be apt. It's all fun, people. Let's... Let us have some funs. Okay, let's see what we got here. Well, of the 20 seats heading into 2025, which could have been 22 for 2026 if FOM, Stefano Domenicali, and the F1 teams decided not to be a bunch of freaking cowards, six of those seats are already taken. And four of them comprise the lineups of both McLaren and Ferrari. McLaren have Lando Norris, who is signed through to the end of 2027, and Oscar Piastri is signed through to the end of 2026. And frankly, do they really need to change that lineup? We know what Lando can do, obviously, and Pastry is very quickly establishing himself as someone to watch for the future. They do seem like a good, fast, harmonious combo, at least for now. The other team that already have their drivers confirmed is Scuderia Ferrari. They've got Charles Leclerc for a long time, it seems. And again, he's someone who you really don't want to replace, even in those moments where he throws his car into the wall in his vain attempt to drive beyond what the car could do. And alongside him for 2025 will be the seven-time champion of the world, Sir Lewis Hamilton. In a move that broke the internet and the hearts of Carlos Sainz fans all over, he'll be ditching Mercedes after over a decade of servitude and six, 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 six drivers' world championships. Can't say it's been a bad innings, but given how far Merck had fallen in the last couple of years, you can't blame Lewis either of wanting to live the dream of every race driver ever and drive for the prancing hearts. Although, given their aptitude for blowing themselves up in recent years, you'd have to ask whether this was totally wise. Time will tell, I guess. But this has actually left Merck in a bit of a tough spot. Sure, they've got George Russell signed until the end of 2025, but the vacancy of that second seat has led to every driver in the land calling Toto Wolff's number in a vain attempt to explain why they would be the next great driver for the team at Brackley. Eventually, the novelty wears off once you start fielding calls from Nikita Mazepin, but it really is a source of contention, and there are a great many good candidates to be had. Esteban Ocon, Valtteri Bottas, Carlos Sainz, Latifi. Now, I thought about this long and hard, day and night. Then I realized that the driver partnering Russell at Mercedes in 2025 will be Fernando Alonso. I know, shocker, right? Especially how it wasn't at all given away in the video's thumbnail. But why choose this guy? Well, <laughs> if that's a question you're gonna pose, then I have to wonder whether you really do know Fernando Alonso. As a driver, he's a commodity and he's marketable as hell. And what Mercedes need right now is an S-tier driver that can help take them back to the promised land. Having said that, we do know what happens when the Lord of the Eyebrows starts moving teams. The success rate ain't exactly in the stratosphere, let's put it that way. However, no team would pass up on someone like this, and Fernando wouldn't pass an opportunity like this up. It's the good old quid pro quo that could give Fernando his first win in 3,000 years. Or sometimes you could take the route you know, like I reckon Red Bull will do. Obviously, we know that Max Verstappen will remain at that team, given his contract runs through to 2028. Yeah, contracts do mean diddly in this sport, but as of the recording of this video, there ain't much reason to be leaving said Red Bull team, unless Freddy Sweet talks Adrian Newey over to Marinello. As for who will be in that second Red Bull seat, it seems that certain people in that team have decided to run with the moniker of out with the old and in with the old. Sergio Perez is going to be given the old heave-ho at the end of the year. Uh, hold on. Where's the logic in that? Well, look up the term knee-jerk reaction in the dictionary and there you will find a picture of Dr. Helmut Marco. That's your explanation right there. But also, Checo really did not help himself over the course of 2023 by running as far behind Max as he did. Whether it was entirely his fault or not doesn't matter to a driver manager who bases his opinions on Wikipedia articles and his loose grip on astrology. And so, who's going to be this young, up-and-coming driver that's going to be thrust into the seat for 2025? Well, of course, it will be Daniel Ricciardo. The chatter out of the Red Bull camp right now seems to be that Honey Badger here is a virtual shoo in no matter how well Checo performs. He's got a contract with the Red Bull family beyond this year, and it did seem that the move was very close to happening for this year, never mind for next year. As a fan of Checo, it sucks, but Marco has the patience and aptitude of a toddler, so I have little faith in the process. But hey, sticking with what you know, that's what I predict for Alpine. They've got some good academy drivers in Victor Martin and Jack Doohan, but the combination of Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly is a solid, solid one at that. Yes, there have been rumblings of a civil war brewing, but that's natural. They're French, but as long as they are on speaking terms, I anticipate they'll remain together for 2025. Actually, the more I think about it,
Yeah. Now, Aston Martin. Some slight changes here. I've mentioned how Alonso will be headed to the shores of Mercedes. Thus, that opens up a vacancy. Given how Aston are heading toward Honda power units for 2026, then politics are going to come into play, whether we want to admit it or not. And Yuki Tsunoda will get the call up to Aston Martin for 2025. And yeah, he may be a Honda guy, but he can stand on his own two feet regardless. And so on that note, in that second seat, <laughs> I really need to spell it out for you. I mean, after all, there is no reason to get rid of Lance Stroll. At least in Big Daddy's mind. Actually, pump the brakes here for a moment. That seat of his is no longer as safe as it usually is, with shareholders within the team virtually demanding that his results improve this year. Am I confident that Sir Lancelot will pick up his form this year? Well, let me put it to you this way. No, but like every other time his seat was supposedly in jeopardy, I refuse to believe it. I think we all do. Not until Lawrence throws him in the boot of a car before plunging into the Montreal River will I believe that that second Aston Martin seat is up for grabs. And even then, I would expect him to still be in it, in absentia. Then we'll see if Felipe Drugovich's gamble will finally pay off. Although that's a big damn if. Haas meanwhile will retain one of its two drivers from the 2024 season, which I'm guessing will end up being Nico Hülkenberg. And in the other seat, we'll enter Ferrari Academy driver and one of the fastest rising stars of junior racing today, Oli the Bear. Bearman. This lad is scheduled to have six FP1 sessions with Haas this year and has been named the test and reserve driver for the team as well. They're clearly putting a fair amount of stock into him and he himself believes that he will be ready for a tilt at Formula 1 come 2025. And Haas have always been a kind of run with what we know kind of team. This time though, they might need to try something new. A bit like if Mercedes were to run Kimi Antonelli. So go on Haas, do it. What's the worst that could happen? Keep a little bit of what you already know and run with something new that could potentially elevate yourselves above midfield hell. Or do what Salba will do and completely revamp. When Salba decided to retain Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guan Yu, there were people over in those Swiss Alps who thought that this lineup was going to be detrimental to other teams' prospects for 2024 and that it was about as uninspired a decision as you could get. Which, to be honest, I think that's a little bit harsh. Surely Valtteri is sharing the profits of those arse calendars he's been making, but with Audi coming into the fold in less than two years, you would think that they would start to bend and mold the team to what they would be wanting, and that'll include a revamp in the driver lineup, the first being a rookie in Teo Porsche. Share. The Frenchman is, after all, the defending Formula 2 champion in a championship which was admittedly a little bit uninspired. But they do seem to hold stock in him, and they may want to take a gamble on him. The other seat, meanwhile, is kind of obvious. Rumors have been circulating for the longest time, and now that Carlos Sainz is a free agent, then rumors could become reality. The Sainz-Audi combo had been touted almost from the moment that Audi were confirmed to be coming to Formula 1 in 2026. Recruiting him into the team a year in advance could help them hit the ground running. And let us not forget that Sainz's father, he himself a great driver, has had long-lasting and very recent ties to Audi racing programs. Because believe it or not, there are some people in the sport with that much amount of foresight. But for the people at Visa Cash Grab at VCAR Red Bull Team RB, what the fuck? I'm not so sure about them. With Yuki off to Aston Martin to replace the Lord of the Eyebrows, and Honey Badger off to do the bidding of the Evil Empire, there will be two vacancies for the 2025 season for this team. One of those seats should be a fairly logical fit. I am, of course, talking about Liam Lawson. Because... Why not? He's got a good passport. Not really. To be real here, he did prove his worth with what he had in 2023. And if they're dead serious about being a team that's no longer going to play second fiddle to Red Bull, then they're going to need someone with experience to be there when both Yuki and Dan leave. I admit it's not a lot of experience, but they keep on promising this guy a full-time seat, and this is as good a chance as any. If they're going to do it, then this will be the best time. But we'll see because... You know how they are. In the other seat, I'm gonna hazard a guess, is going to be a Yumu Uwasa. Because A, he's quick. B, he'll almost certainly do well enough in Super Formula in 2024 to warrant attention. And C, because he'll be the most qualified of all Red Bull Juniors this year to take the reins. Unless Isaac Hacha supermans the field and takes that away from him. He would 100% be worthy of a seat. And it's high time that Marco wakes up to this. But I might be a little bit optimistic there. Okay, finally, we have Williams. Now, the first seat should be easy. Alex Albon. Because in the end, Albon has hoisted the Williams far beyond where many expected it to be. He's been fast and consistent, and you really can't ask for more than that. And since recording this video, Williams thought that as well, because they've just officially signed him for the 2025 season. I don't care about the time of the video's release. This was in the script, so I'm calling that one. But hey, one more seat left. So who's it gonna be? 
Well, it could be a junior driver. They've got some astounding juniors in Zach O'Sullivan and Franco Colapinto. There would be free agents in Sergio Perez and Valtteri Bottas, both of whom are valuable commodities, even if the fickle fan base doesn't think so. But in my view, Williams will defer both of these routes, look at Logan Sargent and say, congratulations. You're fired, because for 2025, the team will herald the debut of the Mercedes Junior, Andrea Kimi Antonelli. Now, I thought for a long time about whether Toto Wolff would have the stones to bring this guy up to Mercedes immediately. But even for a dude who has won 11 million races like Antonelli has, that might be too much of an ask. And besides, it's just not the way that Toto Wolff breaks in his drivers. And ironically, the last two drivers of his that went on to drive for Mercedes ended up starting at Williams themselves. He knows that instead, to nurture the talent for the future in an allied team, let him grow as a driver and finally bring him in when he can hit the ground running and send George Russell to the glue factory. Of course, there's no certainty that this will happen either. As of the recording of this video, Mans hasn't even done a qualifying lap in Formula 2 yet. He hasn't even made a pit stop in his career yet. So a top three or four in Formula 2 as a rookie? No way that's gonna be a lock, right? I don't know, because one can't deny just how crazy good his junior career has been thus far. For them to look at Formula 3 and think, Nah, he could do without. Let's just put him straight to Formula 2. That shows just how much faith Mercedes have on this kid. And I have faith as well. So there we go. One whacked out grid for 2025. I'm sure you've got opinions on this and you've all got your takes as to what will actually happen. So drop them down in the comments below. Just don't be a manus. And I'll see you all later.